I'd like to go over one of the most common conditions we see at our clinic. This is plantar fasciitis. And what we need to understand is the relationship with the kinetic chain and resolving this condition. If we just treat the foot, our results will be minimal. We have to consider everything from the hips, the knees, right down to the feet. No joint works in isolation. So we're going to give you a motion-specific way of addressing this condition. So first thing, let's consider the upper kinetic chain. Maybe can you lie on your side, please? Probably one of the most important factors is to make sure that we have good glute engagement. It's really interesting because if the gluteal muscles are firing the way they should, this has a huge influence on the knees, the feet, and just general motion. In fact, when we take people, and, and research has shown that when you do not have the glutes engaging, you're more prone to hyperpronation or hypersupination. And when they strengthen the glutes up, get them engaging, about 50% of abnormal motion goes away. So one of the most common tests we do is actually to bring the leg up here and just resist hard. Oh, you're good there. <laughs> now, for about, I would say probably 50% or more of patients that I treat, when they have their leg in this position and I push down, the leg will just drop down like this. And if I have them do a squat beforehand, I'll notice that they don't have that abnormal of a motion and yet they have no strength in their glutes. So I'll think, well, maybe we should check the oppositional muscles of the adductors. Go ahead and line your back. Okay, so we're just gonna get in here and kind of work our way around. You okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're kind of working this area here. Now, it's really important to understand why I'm working on the opposing muscles. It's kind of like for my bicep to contract, my tricep has to relax. If my tricep is short, contracted, and rigid, it actually inhibits bicep activity. So it'll appear that I'm weak when I'm not. Same sort of thing occurs with the adductors and the glutes. If you're sitting for a long period of time, spending time sitting in front of the computer, quite often people have tight contracted adductors. Consequently, they'll have a decrease in neurological function to the glutes. And they'll appear weak when they're not quite as weak as they, as they are because they're still walking around and doing yeah. that. Good. So we'll get in there and go back on your side. Now make this case you were strong to begin with. Good. And she's still strong, so this is good. Okay, let's have you lie on your back. Another area I check is actually hamstring length. Let your leg go. And yeah, your hamstrings are usually pretty tight. Not yeah. too bad today, though. Yeah. And then if I found a restriction in that, I'd actually get in and start working around the hamstrings. Now, as you're seeing, I'm actually addressing a lot of areas in the upper extremity, and we're not even considering the bottom of the foot yet. And of course, we will go locally and we'll work directly on the area where the person is experiencing pain. But there's much, much more to it. You doing okay there? Yeah. Okay. So basically, even in a short period of time, I take the leg up, and we see, yeah, yeah. pretty good motion. It's faster release right away, which is, which is really good. Okay, I'm going to get you to actually lie on your side in this way, too. Now, there's a really interesting relationship here. It's not just a matter of looking at the soft tissue, but we should consider joint function. And people will say, well, for example, what does my hip joint have to do with what's going on in my foot? If your hip joint is restricted, the SI joint here, sacroiliac joint, it will inhibit quadricep activity. And what's really interesting, if we follow a pattern through the kinetic chain, if the quads are not actually functioning correctly, their oppositional muscle, which is the hamstrings, will be affected. So we could have very short contracted hamstrings based off of a quad that's not functioning that actually has to do with an SI joint. So it's almost like following a puzzle all the way through. So we have to address several areas. Now, let's start working a little bit below the knee. So let's consider some of the areas below the knee, but we should also talk a little bit about some of the muscles that actually lead into the structures below the knee, such as the quadriceps. We'll go directly into a muscle down here called the tibialis anterior. The iliotibial band on the side here will go into a muscle called the peroneals. Now, why that's even important is some of these muscles below or on your shin bone not only control how your foot hits the ground, but they actually go underneath the bottom of the foot, wrap around, and they help to support and build the arches of the foot. So we're going to work around this area a little bit, and I'm actually going to start up in the quadriceps here. Now, there's a specific technique we do called a quadricep plie, plie squat. Go ahead, Mickey, and go ahead with that one. There we go. Okay. And again, how are we doing there? Good. No problem there? No. Okay. Yeah, Mickey's not too bad here. This isn't that tight. Nope. But we definitely release this if we had major restrictions, because that will affect everything below the knee where it connects into the tibialis anterior through fascial connections. 
Good. Okay, come on back up there. Now I'm actually going to get you to do a raise. There. Good, good. Come on up. I'm getting on the tip anterior here. How's that feeling? <laughs> feeling that one a bit? Yep. Good, good, good. Take it down. Back up again. Perfect. And let's take it up again. Good. Okay, one more time. Now just hold it up there. Then I'm going to go to the side here, and this is going to be on the corneals of the fibularis. Now go ahead, come on down. Feeling that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> take it down again. Perfect. Back up. So we want to work completely around the shins, but we're going to get back on the calf muscles here after we finish this. Back up again, and down. Oh. Okay. Now turn forward here. Nope, just over this way. Perfect. Take it up. Restrictions in the calf muscles are so important. The gastroc and soleus muscle form a co-joined tendon of the Achilles, and that actually wraps around the bottom of the foot and increases tension on the plantar fascia and also the deep layers of the foot. We have the superficial, intermediate, and deep layers of the foot. There we go. You doing okay? Yeah. Oh. And back up again. Perfect. Okay. Now let's start working around on the foot a little bit. So when we finally do get down to the foot, we have to address multiple layers. We have the superficial, intermediate, and deep. Quite often when we get on the, the foot and we actually just work around the superficial layer, Patient, which is the plantar fascia, people will say, I don't really feel anything there. What's going on here? But when we start getting into some of the deeper layers, we'll start to notice some changes. Now, quite often what we'll do is we'll actually introduce a little bit of tension, torsion, and shear stress. So as we get on the bottom of the foot, I'll start moving it into inversion and taking it through there. Are you okay there, Mickey? Yeah. <laughs> Just great. Thanks, good. thanks for asking. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not even suffering from plantar fasciitis, and I can still feel all. restrictions there. <laughs> okay, so we'll kind of work our way around here. And there are a number of different exercises we'll be pres prescribing. If it's exercises for mobility and flexibility, we'll have our patients perform these several times a day. It could be three, four times a day. Multiple repetitions, somewhere between six and eight repetitions. But the key thing is to never let the area of the foot actually adhese and that's why sometimes we'll also get patients to start wearing a, a bit of a boot or a sleeve at nighttime. Mm -hmm. So their first step in the morning isn't tight and we're not breaking adhesions that are formed over, over the evening. You okay there? Yep. Now, we'd be working through multiple layers, working through the foot. But there's another thing that we have to do, and sometimes this gets missed, is we actually have to mobilize the foot. We have to get into the metatarsal joints and actually free them right up. You doing okay there? Oh yeah, that's good. Good. And that includes actually getting in the toes and, you know, just mobilizing them a bit, getting things moving, getting into the different areas here. How are we doing there? That's good. Doing okay? Yeah. You feel that kind of loosening up a little bit? Yeah. All right. Good, good. So we need to work through multiple layers of soft tissue, but we also have to consider everything from the calcaneus at the back here and all the way up from the posterior to the anterior, proximal to distal. Doing okay there? Yeah. Good, good. And we're also going to do a little bit of circumduction in there. You okay? Yeah. Yeah. Feel like that calcaneus is starting to let go a little bit? Yep. Good. Just a couple of little cracks in there. <laughs> <laughs> now, this can be a very frustrating condition, but what I want people to get from this is that you need to work the entire kinetic chain from the hip all the way down. We need to infer first increase mobility and flexibility, and then we start to introduce strengthening exercises. If you, inc if you actually introduce strengthening exercises too soon, you reinforce restrictions or aberrant motion patterns. About 90% of plantar fasciitis cases can be resolved completely, but it needs to be addressed in the correct, correct way. People will walk in the door and they will have pain at the base of their heel and they can barely step down, and yet they have very different structures affected throughout the entire kinetic chain. If we take this approach, we'll be very successful at resolving it. Thank you.